So we will start now discussing the MRP process. So the heart of MRP, the core of MRP is time phasing. And that is the core of MRP process. And that is in contrast to other inventory management uh, system that is called order point or reorder point system. So reorder point does not actually uh, consider time phasing. So the heart of MRP is found in its ability to time phase supply and demand to maintain the real production inventory priorities. If there is insufficient inventory, time phasing will require that a replenishment order be launched to arrive on the date needed by the demand. So in, in the case of insufficient inventory, the uh, order is placed, either purchase order or production order in the relevant time bucket so that inventory arrives on the date needed by the demand. If there is sufficient inventory available, then the time phase calculation stops. In addition, the time phasing will offset the lead time. So that is also very important. So the lead time offset is used to acquire or make the item. So this enables the planner to validate that there is sufficient time to purchase or build that item. So we will see now in the following slides what is meant by lead time. In fact, we have already defined it and how it is offset. What is meant by offsetting the lead time? So here is a simple example. We have a certain product that has a lead time of three weeks. The lot size is 100. The order quantity is 100. And on balance is 125. Now in period one, we are having a requirements of 20. And we already have 125 in balance. So after meeting the requirement of 20, we will be left with 105 items at the end of week one. Now in week two, we are having a requirement of 35. And from the previous period, we have 105 available. So at the end of week two, we will be left with 70 items. And similarly, in week three, there is a requirement of 40. We are having 70 from week two. So after meeting the requirement of week three, we will be left with 30 items. Now in week four, uh, the requirement is of 35 and available is 30. So the available inventory is less than the requirements. So we need to have uh, some new lot of this item available at the start of week four. Now the lot size policy is 100. So we need to have 100 items available at the start of week four. So there is the lead time of three weeks. So we need to uh, place the order three weeks prior to week four. So that is week one. So that is lead time offsetting. So we need this item in week four. So we have to place order in week one. So this is the date of release of order, week one. And this is the date of receipt of order that is week four. So we are placing the order at the start of week one. So week one, week two, and week three are consumed in purchasing or making the item and that is received at the beginning of week four. Now, we, we already had this quantity of 30 and now we are having a quantity of 100. So 130 minus a requirement of 35 will be 95. So we are left with 95 items at the end of week four. In week five, we have a requirement of 25. We have 95 available. So after meeting this requirement, we will be left with 70. And after meeting the requirement of week six, we will be left with 50 items. So this is the basic idea of lead time offset, or it is also sometimes called uh, backward planning because we are starting with when the items will be required and we are placing order uh, in the earlier period to meet that requirement. So this is the core of MRP, the time phasing. So we offset the time as per uh, the requirements of the item in a certain period. So here is another simple example. In this case, for example, if B and C are available, it will take one week 
assemble A because its lead time is one week. So depending upon the requirement of certain quantity of A, we will make sure to make B and C available so that we can make A on time. Similarly, if D and E are available, if D and E are available, it takes two weeks to make B. So the lead time for A is one week, for B it is two weeks. So formal definition of lead time offsetting is a technique used in MRP where planned order receipt in one time period will require the release of that order in an earlier time period based on the lead time of the item as you saw in the previous example. So plan order release shows the latest when purchase or production should be started. It depends upon plan order receipt, that is when the part is needed. So this word is important. This is the latest when the order should be released. So if you are considering the safety lead time, then you can place the order a little earlier to make sure that the order will arrive on time. So plan order release is when you are releasing the order of a certain quantity, purchase order or production order. And plan order receipt is when you expect to receive that quantity. So here is a simple question for you. If we are starting from scratch, what is the cumulative lead time to build the parent item? Uh, yes, of course, we are taking a couple of assumptions in this case, but to keep it simple, it will require uh, eight weeks. So we need three weeks here, three weeks here, and two weeks here. Uh, so it will require eight weeks. So now more important question is, this one, I review the same bill of material structure. If the parent item is to be shipped on week 10, on week 10, when does a purchase order need to be released to purchase component A? So you are currently in week one. So it, it needs some thinking not too much thinking, but uh, some critical thinking to answer this question. So when does a purchase order need to be released for the purchase of component A in order to deliver the parent this final part on week 10? So the answer is week five because we will start the production of, in fact, the purchase process of a component A on week five. So week five, six, and seven will be consumed in the purchasing process of component A. Then week eight and nine will be consumed in the manufacturing of the final assembly because its lead time is two weeks. So at the beginning of week 10, we will have uh, this parent item available to be shipped to the customer. So of course, we are not adding any safety lead time in this case. So there is a similar question. Review the same bill of material structure and the same situation that the parent is to be shipped on week 10. When does a purchase order need to be released to purchase component C? Same question, but now it is for component C instead of component. So the answer is week three. It should be week two because uh, week two, three, and four will be required for component 
C and then weak. Okay, it's a tricky, a little tricky. Let me see. I think it's week three is correct because we are missing one thing, five and six and it should be seven and eight. So what we are missing? Uh, so let's solve this simple example uh, in which we are having a product A that has two uh, components, the assembly B and component C and B comprises D and D. The lead time is given and uh, there are 50 A's required in week five and 100 in week six. The order policy is lot for lot. Now, again, we are still discussing the concept of lead time offsetting. So we need to receive 50 A's in week five and 100 in week six. So lead time is one week. So the latest we can place the order is 100 in week five and 50 in week four. So that is obvious. So we are offsetting equal to one week. Now the B has a lead time of two weeks. And we are also assuming that each item required is one. For one A we need one B and for one B we need one D and so on. So we need to have 100 Bs available here and 50 Bs available here because this production of A is to start, 50 A's is to start in week four and 100 A's is to start in week five. So Bs should be available before that. And we will offset as per two weeks. So 100 A's, uh, sorry, 100 Bs will be required two weeks earlier and 50 Bs will also be ordered two weeks earlier. Similarly, C is also a component of A, so we need 100 Cs as well as 50 Cs, but the lead time for C is one week, so the order will be placed one week earlier. Now D is the component of B, B. So we need to have 100 uh, Ds here and 50 here. So keep in mind and notice that plan order release of the parent becomes plan order receipt for the component. So just like the plan order release of A became plan order receipt for B and C. So that will be true for D and D e as well. So the lead time is one week for D, so we will place order one week earlier. And similarly, E is the component of uh, B, so we will have the same requirement for E as we had for D. And the lead time is one week, so we will place order one week earlier. So please go through it. It is a simple example, but if you have any confusion, you can ask because the rest of the examples will be slightly more complex and we will be having more elements of MRP there. If it is unclear, you can ask. Still, we are discussing lead time offsetting. Placing the order earlier uh, according to the lead time. 